want it. Give it to me. I deserve it. I'm entitled to it. Who says so? Join us on Hot Flash today and find out if you're entitled to anything. Welcome to Hot Flash. I'm Kathy Hembry and I'm here with Kim and Tony. And today we're going to talk about the entitlement issue. Mm -hmm. And, you know, both of them said, I don't like that word because it just has negative connotation. <laughs> and I thought, well, the definition, according to the old, you know, dictionary says it's the condition of having a right to have or to get something. Now, it also can be a type of financial help that's provided um, through a will or an inheritance. Or this is the part we don't like. It's the feeling or belief that you deserve to be given something mm -hmm. just because, so mm -hmm. you don't earn it, okay? So as moms and dads and grandparents, whoever's watching out there, uh, you know, we hear a lot of these things. We hear, you know, I want it. Well, why don't you pay for it? Well, all the other parents pay for it. Now, I, my kids are teenagers and older, so you may not hear that from Dom, but you hear give me, or he grabs, because mm -hmm. he thinks he should or just Or whines, have. yeah. He whines, <laughs> or he screams if you take it away and say no. Mm -hmm. And how about you? You've got a variety of ages. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the attitude is there, maybe not the exact words, but well, well, Oh, definitely. it's an attitude. You know, we have to have a be attitude, not an attitude. <laughs> we need an attitude of gratitude. <laughs> well, listen, there are nine types of entitlement issues. When you're dealing with someone, though, that has entitlement issues, I, I can't say this, it can make your life a living beep. Because no matter <laughs> what you do or say, those people will never be happy. That's a quote. It's true also, but it's a quote. And then it says people with entitlement issues have an agenda. So some of the agendas are this. They, accept, they expect the same rules that apply to others shouldn't apply to them. True? Mm -hmm. I'd call that disobedience. Okay, they feel massively put upon when people ask them for a small favor, chores, or expect that when you ask people, when they ask people for a favor, it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I want a car, but I can't empty the dishwasher. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You can tell I have a teenager at home still. Okay, or you expect other people to be more interested in you and what's on your agenda than you are interested in them. And so it's you're so not really considering, selfish. you're not, yeah, yourself. So you're disobedient. And you're greedy and you're selfish. Those are people who have entitlement issues. Okay, you disregard the rules that are intended for everybody's comfort. Like, okay, I have teenagers. I want them to come home at a certain time because I shut the house down and go to sleep. And even if I fall asleep on the couch and they think we'll just go to sleep, it still disrupts like I'm exhausted in the morning because I'm waiting for them. So that's a little selfish there too. Okay, they freeload. People that have entitlement issues freeload. They inconvenience others without thinking. They cancel appointments. They show up late. They don't bother mm -hmm. showing up at all. They don't let people know they've canceled their appointment. Oh, that okay. we're just supposed to know that. Mm -hmm. we're, we're mind <laughs> yeah. readers. They think it's okay to upset or offend other people. And they see people mm -hmm. that try to seek peace as weak. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they cheat in environments that are based on reciprocity. For example, they can ask questions like on a forum that don't, you know, whatever. They, they don't wait for other people to be included in the conversation. And when working in groups, they think they should be the leader. Okay, those are the problems with people who have entitlement issues. We're gonna take a break and come back and talk about how we can change those nine attitudes into good ways of thinking and maybe steer our kids and ourselves toward not being people that think we deserve something when we haven't done anything to deserve it. Stay with us. You know, we're entitled to share the gospel. We're entitled to being made fun of for it. We're entitled to not getting everything we want because maybe somebody else needs it. The Speck in Your Brother's Eye, a book written by Ron Hembry, brings a biblical understanding of God's plan for you and how to deal with conflict and accusation. When you're wrong, everyone tends to know it. There is no room for help in today's world. The politically correct movement has strangled us into times of stress and captured our thoughts into secrets. When someone else is wrong, we tend to jump in and join the gang to capture their actions into failure. But what does the Bible say? What are we to do with these feelings and thoughts that come to us in the accusations? 
for a suggested gift of $15 or more this month, request your copy of Ron Hembry's book, The Speck in Your Brother's Eye. You can write to us in the United States at Post Office Box 150, Murraysville, Pennsylvania, 15668-0150. In Canada, Post Office Box 456, Orangeville, Ontario, L9W5G2. Or you can request the book and give online at www.biblediscoverytv.com. Our phone lines are also available at 724-733-8336 in the United States and 519-940-8338 in Canada. Welcome back to Hot Flash. We were talking about different types of entitlement issues, but basically it comes down to obedience, uh, disobedience, greed, and selfishness. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. And you know what? Unless you recognize that you're entitled, and kids through adolescence don't recognize that. Kids don't recognize that. Hopefully when you're an adult, you start to recognize it. But if you heard anything that I read, nine symptoms of entitlement, and you thought, ooh, I kind of do do that, well, then here are some things that we need to do. We need to sensitize ourselves to others, which is, I think, do unto others as you would have them do unto mm -hmm. you. Once again, God's word has the answers. Um, I love this one, think different. And I thought immediately of when I was a child, I thought like a child, I acted like a child, I did things. But when I became a man or an adult, I put away childish things. So you have to think different. Then look around you and observe what happens when you curb those entitlement issues. You know, if I could get a teenager to just stop and think and say, well, what would happen if you didn't act so selfish? Mm -hmm. They might get what they want. Well, we might also find ourselves on the reciprocal end of good stuff if we did something mm -hmm. that wasn't so selfish. And then catch yourself if you fall into that dilemma of being entitled. You know? So are you saying if you want other people to not be in, to not act entitled, we have to make sure that we're being conscious of not being that way too. Well, I think that we all, as human beings, have I'd like to, to think I'm not very much like that, right. but no. maybe I am. Well, in some I think ways. during times in our life we are. I think children sure. have a self, a tendency to selfishness. We're born into a world of sin. The first thing Dom says is that yes, mommy, it's no. <laughs> right. You know, first thing. Right. Somebody, so we are born into that sinful world, and we do have to at some point recognize it. So we have to teach. And our children yeah. to act that way. That? How we, do we do that? Well, we <laughs> teach by well, example. There's a problem. Like we can evaluate ourselves and think, oh, I need to, you know, work on this area. But what if you're dealing with someone who is acting that way? Yeah. Well, I mean, what's well, the okay. I I laughed because I thought I'm a reasoner. I'm really practical, and when I see somebody misbehaving, I'll sit down and say, now look, you know, this is what it sounds like, and and so I read. <laughs> things not to do when you're dealing with a person. Oh, well, okay. and, and so as parents, I'm dealing with children, but you might be dealing with a coworker, a neighbor, a relative, an in-law. I mean, we're gonna deal with these people. A and spouse. these are the things we're not to do. Get ready. We're not really to give them empathy and let them think that they're special and they shouldn't follow the rules. We shouldn't give them that, you know, we, we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't uh, think, oh, the kid feels bad or, oh, you know, that person's hurting and so we'll let him have their way. We also shouldn't get angry and get into a power struggle with them. We shouldn't try to reason with them. And we shouldn't try to fall into their despair. So I thought, well, what do we do then? So don't talk to them. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Then I thought, what should we do? Well, you know, it's said to kind of deflect it by saying, I can see you're really upset. I'm sorry you feel that way. Period. I over-explain. Any of you over-explain? I over-explain. But sometimes it's just, I'm sorry, you feel that way. Or, you know what, go ahead and t I can tell you're sad, tell me. And I've done this with I've done this with some elderly people who really are lonely. And I am empathetic to how lonely they are. And yet, it's like they never try to get out of that loneliness. And I've had to say, look, you are lonely. And I'm really mm -hmm. sorry you're lonely. But right now, today, where we are, are you lonely right now with me? You know, let's think about that because then when you're away from me and you're lonely, you might think, oh, I had a nice time when I was at lunch with Kathy. That's what I do. You know, I'm lonely for Ron. He's in heaven. He's been gone five years in June. But I have a choice. I can either, and I, I laid there last night in bed and I thought, thank you, Lord, that the tears don't fall out of my face just when I think his name anymore. Mm -hmm. They don't. And I can remember things and think, yeah, he was a great guy. I had a lot of fun, you know, and he was just wonderful to me and I love him. And so I have changed my thinking. 
I've had to think, mm -hmm. right, he's with the Lord. I'm going to see him again. I miss him. But what good does it do me to miss him? I to think me. sometimes, too, when, uh, maybe you enable someone who's being that way because you feel a little guilty about your circumstances. Mm -hmm. Well, it did yeah. say that the people that are entitled are often ashamed of something they've done, and that's a person who really can be helped. And then there are some who just don't see any need for it, you know. Um, or it's just too exhausting, so you just let them, true. Let them go, and yeah. that's not right either. I, okay. I well, might be guilty of that sometimes. Well, you know, I, okay, we go. So I go to one extreme, which makes me sound really kind and nice, but the truth is I allow it. I don't set boundaries, and you might set boundaries sooner than you should because you don't want to allow them in, and mm -hmm. I give you permission because you have a bit little, look, I'm being <laughs> empathetic to her. I'm going to let her, no. <laughs> we'll do what Jesus calls us <laughs> yes. to do. But you know what I thought is when I was reading, I want it. I thought, well, when we want something, we recognize that we need something. And you know what? If you want what God has entitled you to, then we have to repent. So instead of saying, I want it, it's I repent. Then it's, I deserve it. Well, no, we don't deserve it, but he gives it to us. And so we believe. But I thought, all right, we receive. We receive it from him. And then, you know, it's give it to me. And so I accept it. You know, so I repent, I receive, I believe, and then I live my life in acceptance of what we're entitled to. And when we get back, we're going to share with you out of Romans how we know that we are indeed entitled to a lot of things. Thank you so much for your support of BDTV. Because of your viewership and financial contributions, we're able to bring to you original programming such as Hot Flash, Quick Study, Sound Reason, and even The Difference, amongst other shows. We are excited today for what we believe tomorrow holds. And as we grow, we hope you grow right along with us, right here on BDTV. hot flash. Today we're talking about the uh, word entitlement and I want to read Romans 8 16 through 18 and I typed it big so I could read it. For his Holy Spirit speaks to us deep in our hearts and tells us that we really are God's children and since we're his children we will share in the treasures that he has given us for God gives all to Jesus his son and through Jesus we now share in all of that. Doesn't that sound great? We're entitled to all the blessings and glory Okay, then it says, but we must also share in his suffering. Mm -hmm. So entitlement doesn't just entitle us to things, it entitles us to responsibility. And you know, we're entitled to share the gospel. We're entitled to being made fun of for it. We're entitled to not getting everything we want because maybe somebody else needs it more than we do. And then it says, but if we suffer now, trust us nothing compares to the glory we'll have later and that's mm -hmm. our eternal hope in jesus that we're going home mm -hmm. now tony read a scripture out of timothy Re mm -hmm. read that scripture uh, first timothy 5 8 if anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for his immediate family he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever okay and you know that scripture conflicted you kind of a little bit yeah i mean how, sounds where's like the, the ultimate where's the point of of okay now you do it yourself <laughs> you go and provide for your family What's the point of that? No, where's where's the point that you break Will off? you do that? Yeah. Well, it's, it didn't, you know, I, for me, Kim, well, for me, I have an opinion, <laughs> but Kim, do you have an opinion? Well, I guess I, I take it as basically saying you have a responsibility, like you don't want to tax the resources of God when it's something you can, not the resources, but the resources that God has given and being selfish and wanting them to take care of you when you can take care of yourself. Is that well, what it's I, saying? Okay, I think the Bible's pretty clear throughout that if we don't work, we don't eat. You know, God, yeah. we have to work. And I think there, and I look at the context of that, you know, I look and say a family, a man is to take care of his family. Mm -hmm. And in today's world, unfortunately, we see a lot of parents who abdicate that responsibility. They either abandon their kids, they make several families with several different people, and how in the world could they take care of all of them? Mm -hmm. You know, but a person who does not accept that responsibility that's God given, you take care of your family first. And I think that's your wife, your children, your household. Mm -hmm. And then as God provides, then back to your right. parents and then your relatives. I think sometimes, you know, we could, like, I remember one time I called relatives. A relative was going through a hard time and I called relatives of all of ours and said, for five months as a sense of support, could we all send something 
to them just to let them know financially that we're not going to cover all their bills, but could we send something just as a statement? And one of the relatives said to me, well, why would we? And I thought, why would we? Well, we would because they're our relative. And if you don't have the money, fine. If you don't have the ability, then maybe you could just write a nice note and encourage them and pray for them and tell them that you're thinking about them. But mm -hmm. if you have the money, could we all take a love offering basically to show support? And so I realized then that not everybody, you know, in that case, maybe that person couldn't give anything. Mm -hmm. And I was really imposing my own desire on them and embarrassed them. Or maybe they were a little selfish and had that feeling of entitlement that, well, I provided for my own family. Why should I provide mm -hmm. for them? Like, where are we, our brother's keeper? You know, yeah. I have a friend who works hard and he has a really lazy brother. <laughs> you know, do I think he should pay his brother's bills? No. But I think if his brother does a turnaround and comes and says, I recognize this wrong in my life and I repent and I need some help getting back on track. Then do mm -hmm. I think we as Christian brothers, because you know, is family limited to just blood family there? Or are we talking about? Well, he says immediate family first, first. and then, you know. Okay, but we're all brothers and sisters in Christ once we. Right. I guess I'm just saying we're, what's our responsibility, right, to help, but then we don't want to create an, an entitlement. Kind of an attitude. Mm -hmm. We don't want that mentality. Them. You don't want to foster that. Talk to the wrong, you know, boy, I have a daughter-in-law with good questions, and she has a mother-in-law who's who's gone too far in doing that. I think I have created some people that in ministry, Ron and I were involved with for many years. And well, I, I don't know if it's created or if it's well, I, I people fed into. find it. Oh, yeah. I don't know. No, I, don't I know. fed into <laughs> allowing them to not take responsibility, and I just kept thinking if I could just explain it to them better, they would get it. Or if I showed them a different way, they would get it. Or they didn't have what I had. So I had to, sh you know, and then finally I thought, well, first of all, shame on me for thinking that they aren't smart enough to get it, that the Lord can't reveal to them in a way they can hear. And to rob them of that sense of accomplishment that you do get when you work mm -hmm. and you do what God's created us to do, to use the resources he's given us. Mm -hmm. So that's a fine line. That's, again, we're going to recommend that book, Boundaries, <laughs> because it, it encourages us yeah. to set those. Well, good. I just, it just conflicts me because, um, like, I've seen in families and I know of people that have, like, older children who are mm -hmm. adults, but mm -hmm. they're making bad choices and mm -hmm. then they keep coming back to the family, like, playing on right, that a little right, bit. And then right. the family feels obligated because it's family. I mean, if I think about it, like, if that was my child, I'd probably want to help, but where's, like, where's the line? Well, so that's why that verse conflicts me a well, little bit. Well, let's go back, though. That verse that says, when I was a child, I spoke mm -hmm. like a child, act like, when I was a man, I put away things. So if you've got a man, a woman, an adult coming back who's still acting like a child, mm -hmm. then I think we go against God's word to step in okay. and to solve their problems right. because they should put it. Now, can we love them and pray for them and walk through life with them? Yes. But I, after Ron died, I had to say no to some people that I had been very willing to share time, emotions, and finances with. And if I said I didn't have the money, I, you know, I guess I found out some of them didn't really want to be there mm -hmm. a lot. Found out a lot of things then. We'll talk about it a little bit more when we come back. Don't go away. Hey guys, I just want to tell you today about a little book. It's inexpensive. It's simple to read. You can read it in about 45 minutes, taking your time. It's a book God gave me about six years ago that talks about the struggle we go through between being on the branch as a budding acorn and Father Tree saying, it's going to be amazing. Wait till you see what I do. And then you come to in the dirt on the ground. And there is a a vision that's given you and I for life, a dream from God, and we hold it in our heart, but there are times to get to that dream, that dream, that vision has to die. The book is called Acorn Dropped, and it's about that season when you are in the dirt, on the ground. It was written when I was in the dirt and on the ground, and my family and I held on and believed for God's best. If you've been discouraged, if you've been through a tough time, I promise you this book will help you. Well, we talked about a lot and we've run out of time. We have two minutes. Kim, tell us what our inheritance, which gives us a sense of entitlement according to God's word really is. Well, I think first uh, we have to be adopted. 
-hmm. We have to become a child of God. And mm -hmm. then we become a, a we have an inheritance, a joint heir with Christ because right. of what he did. And, you know, somebody said there's 12,000, 1,200 promises in the Bible, and somebody else said there's 3,500 promises in the mm -hmm. Bible. I'd say read the Bible and fill yourself full of that inheritance knowledge that we have that gives us a sense of entitlement, not because we did anything, but because of everything Jesus did when he gave his life for us. He gave us. He did it. We don't deserve it, but he did it, and he freely gives it to us. And if we accept it and believe, we ask into our heart, we confess of our sins, we repent and turn from them and walk toward him. From the moment you do that till the moment he calls you home, you can live in that knowledge that you have inherited all the promises God has for you. He is our deliverer. Start screaming about our shield. <laughs> redeemer. Redeemer, <laughs> okay. redeemer <laughs> our provider. <laughs> our comfort everything he's our everything and we <laughs> hope he's your everything if you have a comment please email us at hotflash at the stream tv.com and join us next time when we're going to be talking about childlike faith do you think you have it i hope i do we'll see you then